Hi, everyone. It's Kimber, the study abroad specialist here with the study abroad question of the week. If you have a question of the week that you would like me to answer, go ahead and fill out the Google form that is just below if you're on YouTube or just above if you are on Facebook. I like to come on here and answer questions as I get them in here. So I'd love to answer any questions that you have on any topic about study abroad. So definitely check that out. So this question comes from Anonymous this week. So hi, Anonymous. Their question was about study abroad references. So they are trying to figure out, number one, how do you choose someone to be your reference? How do you go about doing that? And also, how do you know when to ask them for references? So this is a great question. I know that it can be very nerve wracking to get out there and ask people for references. You feel a little bit overwhelmed. You feel like maybe you don't want to be bothering them. And so we are going to talk about that today. But before we do, I just want to mention that um, if you are new to this channel and you've never been here, I help students with all things study abroad. So advice, tips, and just general information on how to create a semester abroad away. So definitely plan on sticking around for that if you're interested. And I wanted to point out that I have a free guide that you can download. So my free e-guide called Finding Your Perfect Study Abroad Program is linked just below. And with that e-guide, we basically dive into what is a study abroad program? Because I know that can be very confusing to people. We talk about the three common types of study abroad programs to just kind of give you an idea of what to expect in terms of location, length of time, you know, what you might be looking forward to in terms of housing, different things like that. And then further along in that guide, you sort of able to go through and figure out based on what is in there, what may work best for you in terms of what you're looking for, for a study abroad opportunity. So definitely check that out. It is completely free to download. Just put in your information on that page and then it'll be sent directly to your email. So I want to highlight that in case there are some people watching this who are just at the beginning of figuring out their journey or maybe you are just in the research phase and you're trying to still find a program. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But to get back to the question for this week, when thinking about references, I, as I was saying before, I know that it can be very overwhelming because you're like, well, you know, I have people that I want to reach out to, but how do I go about doing it? How do I sort of choose the people that I want to be references for me. And I think a lot of you by now, particularly if you're an undergrad, you obviously have had experience with this when you're applying to colleges, but it's a little bit different because, you know, in high school or in secondary school, there's sort of this, uh, you know, sort of set up uh, established way of doing things, right? For most people, no matter what country you're in. So you have like these built-in relationships with your teachers, with your counselors who are helping you figure out your next step. Whereas once you sort of get out of that, you know, depending on what size of a university or college you have, you may not necessarily even have relationship, relationships with the professors that teach your classes, right? A lot of schools I know, particularly here in the U.S. and some in Canada, you know, they're so huge. There's 500 students in a class, and so you just are working with a teacher assistant, a TA, and a lot of times you may not even know them that well or even like them, um, depending on who they are. And so, it can be very tricky. So for the first part of the question is thinking about who to choose. Well, that is going to depend on what your program is asking for. There are some programs, depending on where you're applying, if you're applying for a semester program, it could be a little bit different. Or if you are applying for a degree program, it's definitely different. But usually they want a mix of academic and professional references. Now we need to clarify right off the bat and you know, at the end of the day, I'm only just giving you advice. I cannot tell you what to do, but I can definitely tell you what not to do. And so professional reference is different from a personal reference. So there are some times in your life where you may need a personal reference. Maybe there is someone that needs to vouch for you to, you know, purchase something, or it could be a case like that. But typically, and most certainly, you do not want to be putting down, you know, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin, um, even technically like their best friend, people who are going to be super close to you and like know the inner outs of your life on a personal level. You do not want to be putting them down as a reference for a program that you're going to want to do. It's different if it's like, you know, maybe a family friend who can really speak to you. Maybe you did an internship for them one summer. That's a little bit different, but just people who obviously can say what a great person you are and how responsible you are. You get up every day and, you know, do what you need to do. 
that's a lot different than professional or academic references. And I think most people understand that, but there have been times where even when I've been working with students, if you're interested in learning more about my advising program, just go to the link that's here on the screen and you can learn more about that. But there have been times when even I've been working with students and they're like, oh, well, you know, I think I'm just gonna, for one of my references, just put down, you know, a cousin who I, you know, know them pretty well, but I've done some work for them so I'll put them down. That would lean more towards a personal reference. Again, it's someone that you share some type of blood or relationship with. And so you definitely don't want to do that. So the main types of references that most study abroad programs are going to be asking for are either academic references or professional references. And they tend to lean on more academic. That's why a lot of times in the application, they will ask for three uh, different references. Uh, maybe they'll ask for a recommendation letter, but they will focus heavily on academic because most students, particularly if you're at the high school um, or secondary school or at the undergraduate level, you are less likely to have professional references. Now, if you have done internships or you've done volunteer work or whatever, you may have at least one or two, but at that particular stage in your life, you have mainly been in school. So most people take that into account and run programs. And so they want to hear about academic references. Now, in terms of choosing your academic references. I always just like to state the obvious. You want to focus heavily on number one, any type of professor or teacher, or even a advisor, college advisor, or someone who has advised you on something who has experience with number one, your academic work style, because we all have one. So how you best learn and also to someone who you have had good rapport with. So this is not going to be the opportunity to just go to a professor who you've never interacted with and say, can you give me this reference? Number one, they're not going to be able to recommend anything about you. And number two, they're probably not going to do it anyway, because that's just kind of weird to go up to someone who, yeah, you're in their class, but they have never even talked to you and ask them to give you a reference. So you really wanna think about people who are gonna be able to speak highly of your ability to perform academically. I also like to mention too that you wanna think about, and it's a little bit hard to choose this, but you can sort of be able to choose in terms of thinking about people who are going to present you in an overall best light. So there are people out there who give great references, what we usually call like glowing references, but do they just talk about, well, you know, this person is a hard worker or are they, you know, they show up on time or whatever that is, that is important. But what a lot of, you know, admissions, similar to college, what a lot of study abroad admissions, you know, people who are going through these applications are looking for is that they also want to know some of your weaknesses, but either how you over, overcame them or how you would best handle something in a situation. And they're not necessarily asking that like bit for bit in the reference part of what they are um, sending out, let's say to your references to respond to. But what they wanna know is, are you presenting this person in their whole light? Because you know people kind of go in and they understand that you're gonna, if you are a person who's giving a reference, you're gonna wanna speak highly of that person. That's why they chose you, but they also, a lot of times want people to sort of demonstrate maybe where this person is a little bit weaker, not as a bad thing, but just understanding that people are, you know, whole people and everyone is not good at everything. So I can give you an example for, you know, pretty much all the programs that I've done and I've done a lot, um, both for university level and for internships and for uh, graduate programs and study abroad and all these different things that sort of led me here to talking to you about this. The way that I choose my references is I always would go through and choose like a very strong, like top of the level academic reference. So this was typically someone who I had, you know, worked very close with, like maybe it was, you know, like my favorite teacher in high school or my favorite, you know, like college counselor or whoever, someone who like can speak in and out very clearly. Um, you know, once I sort of transition from undergrad to graduate level is about someone who I worked closely with on my undergrad dissertation, someone that can clearly speak to who I am as a, as a student, also as an individual, how, what my work style is, how I get along with things, how I manage my time. But then I also too wanted to choose someone who was going to be able to sort of speak to me on a uh, what I call personal professional level. So they know me through academics, but they also can talk about, 
where are some of the areas that I need to improve? Now, you may ask, why would you do that? Because that sort of like makes you look bad. It doesn't really make you look bad, but it sort of shows that range. If you're just giving you know, the opportunity for people who are only going to say great things about you. Now, again, we can get into this really shortly, but you don't want to choose someone who's going to say horrible things about you, but you definitely want to make sure that you have a balance of people so that if you have that person who, you know, like you worked with them on your undergrad dissertation and you're trying to get into a grad program, or you worked with them on your high school senior project, and they're writing something for college and, you know, they're going to say like, bam, 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 bam. Like these were all great. This was great. This was great. Then you also want someone who knows you in an academic or potentially a professional, maybe, you know, from an internship or something that can speak to you, but that can add a little bit, either more color around who you are as a person. So talking more about your personality strengths or someone who can even say like, maybe, you know, I was someone who always struggled in math. And so for one of my graduate programs, I actually had my math teacher actually write a recommendation for me. And you would be like, well, why did you do that? Because I wanted them to talk more about the struggles that I actually had and how I overcame them, you know, because they were the person that, you know, they knew that I was really committed to getting through the tutoring and getting through working with my advisors to figure out a plan to get through that. This is at the college level. And so I wanted someone that could really kind of speak to that, that could show a side of me that the person who was going to give me the glowing reference wasn't going to mention, you know, not even because I don't even think they really knew about it, but because, you know, like they were focused on just saying like, you know, she's great at this, she's good at this, she's going to excel at this. I also wanted to sort of bring in that sort of mid note to have the person say like, well, she's really good at these things, but then I watched her go through these struggles, but this is how she overcame it. And so I like the idea of having that balance there. So typically, depending on the program, they may ask for two references. You would want to lean heavily on academic, but if they also have a professional reference that they want to hear from or someone that's going to give you a you know, letter of recommendation that's going to be professional, then you may want to reach out to someone who you may have volunteered for or who you've done an internship for or something around that where they can talk more about your basic skills of, you know, can you talk in front of a group or can you, you know, even if you're not the math whiz, can you at least, you know, when you were working the cash register, how did you do and how did you get customers through the line or how did you deal with, you know, issues that customers had, things like that can go a long way. And I know one of the things that you're probably wondering is, well, why would, you know, a study abroad program when I hear about that, I'm already in college. So, you know, doesn't that make me a viable applicant without a recommendation? The thing is, is that even though you are already, you know, in high school or in a college or wherever, what study abroad, uh, you know, people are looking at, particularly at the program level as they're doing admissions, is it's similar to college, but it's a little bit more succinct because again, you're usually going for a shorter amount of time. But what they're looking for is how is this person going to perform in an entirely new environment? You're in a foreign country. You're already going to have things stacked against you, right? So you could have language stacked against you. You could have the fact that, you know, you are from an entirely different culture stacked against you. You're going to have just the basic sort of, you know, homesickness and all these different things that are stacked against you once you get there. How does this person deal with change? How do they deal with adversity? How do they deal with things as they come? And so that's basically what they're looking for. So I hope that that provides a little bit more insight on at least the recommendation part and sort of you know who you should choose. In terms of approaching them, you have to remember that particularly in the academic space and even somewhat in the professional space, and you'll learn this as you get older, but in the academic space, like this is something that not only do professors and teachers and instructors that they expect from people, but they actually feel honored to be able to do it most of the time, particularly just make sure, and we'll get into this shortly of how you should approach it, but they want to be able to do this, you know, for some, depending on where they live and what they're doing, they may be writing a hundred recommendations within a six month period. So they're used to doing that. Now, one of the things that is very, 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 very important is that you want to give them enough time. So no matter what you're doing, you want to make sure that you leave, leave enough time for it, but you don't just want to, let's say you're working on an application and it is due on the 30th of the month. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I need a letter of recommendation. And I just realized it is the 26th of the month. Let me reach out to professor, professor X. Like you are not doing that. That is a no, no. You want to give people, I like to say, if you're going to be generous, give them at least six weeks lead time 
but we know that sometimes things happen. So at least four weeks could be enough. I know that some professors, even like at the beginning of a course or even some teachers at a high school or secondary level, they will sort of point that out like from the beginning or they may have it in their syllabus of if you need something like that from them, what their time frame is. But you could always just reach out and ask and say like, you know, do you prefer that I let you know far in advance or should I let you know just four weeks in advance? How long do you want me to let you know before I'm gonna need that? Just so it gives them the courtesy of, first of all, uh, you know, showing that you value their time. That is very important. That is something that will carry you through throughout all of your career, no matter what you're doing. Even if you're working for yourself, you're going to find out that you want people to value your time. I know I do. And so you definitely want to show that you value their time, but also it's going to give them a chance to get everything they need into place. Maybe they're going to ask you, can you send over your latest transcript? They may not have that. Can you send over what the program actually looks like? And so that they can sort of research more and they can figure out how to tailor their recommendation or letter of reference for you to what the people are looking for in the program. So you want to give them enough time to be able to do that. The other thing too, is that in addition to thinking about people who, you know, maybe you're going to have that, you know, number one star who's going to say all the glowing things about you. And then you have that mid person who's going to sort of be a little bit more um, objective and sort of paint both the good side and the bad side of who you are in terms of a student, not saying horrible things, but just kind of being more authentic. And then maybe you have a professional person. You also too want to just think about, you know, who these people are. So in thinking about, you know, if it's someone who, and again, this really just depends on where you're going to study abroad and what you're doing, how you're doing it. If it is someone, let's say that your star person, your star reference is going to be someone that is directly in the field that you want to study in. So maybe you are in uh, biology that you want to do something in biology or maybe genetics or whatever. And the academic person that you're picking is a PhD, you know, well-renowned professor in genetics from your school. That is going to go a long way. But then the other person that you choose is from the English department. So for them, they're not directly connected to what you want to do, which also kind of makes sense as how they can speak to a different level to you. Because again, when people tend to speak the same language, and I don't just mean like phonetic language, I mean like when they're in the same field, the same area, if they see someone who's doing well and they know you want to get into this fellowship or into this study abroad or whatever it is, in this case, study abroad, which, you know, a lot of times fellowships are study abroad, then they're going to really hype you up. Whereas the person who is in a different field or area, they will be excited that you reach out to them, but they're going to be able to speak at it from a different level. And then of course you have your professional reference. So I would just say that you also want to think about who the people are that you're choosing, not just from, you know, perspective of, you know, what they do, but also, you know, what are their skill sets and what might they be able to contribute to the letter of reference? So I hope this was helpful to anonymous out there. Um, and as I mentioned before, if you have any questions about study abroad, you can either leave a comment below in the description box or just fill out the form and I'd be happy to answer it on a future video. I love going through these. And so just keeping in mind with the references and the letter recommendations, between making sure that you know, you're thinking clearly about who you're gonna be choosing. And also once you've chosen those people, reach out to them. Maybe if you haven't connected with them in a long time, reach out to them and say, you know, I would love for you to be a reference for me. Here's what I have going on. Making sure that you're giving them enough time to be able to get everything in order so that they can write you a great reference. I know that you know, most people out there are gonna be so thrilled that you thought of them and that you want them to give their feedback so that you can you know, get ahead and get into your study abroad program. So don't feel embarrassed, don't feel intimidated, just feel ready, start preparing yourself so that you can get the references that you want and need. If you are new to the channel, I release videos every single Friday and sometimes on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So definitely stick around for that. Go ahead and subscribe and also like this video. And as I mentioned earlier in the top of the video, definitely check out the free e-guide, particularly if you are a student who is kind of just in the starter or research phase of figuring out a way to find a study abroad program. I would love for you to get that information. But that being said, I'm so excited that you are here and that you stayed for this one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.